Hey, what's going on everyone? I have yet another reusable rocket video this week. However, this video is a little special being that it's an entirely stock build, uh, the barge included. The only mod that was used was the FMRS mod uh, to save and pick up all of the staging. I know this makes the video itself not entirely stock and I did have a few uh, stock designs that didn't need the FMRS mod initially, but I felt they were very unrealistic and uh, were essentially just one giant booster with no staging that would drop off cargo and just return back. So in the end, to keep the build nice and in line as well as efficient, I decided to use the FMRS mod and designed the rocket modeling a Falcon Heavy style setup. While mentioning the mods, you can also see I am using the WASD camera mod as well as auto strut. These were used just for building to add some quality of life and were removed for the entirety of the launch. Uh, at launch, FMRS mod and the camera tools mod were the only ones running. And like I said, it is a super heavy launcher. Uh, so if you haven't noticed, I have three of the orange tanks up there, which are 36 tons each, putting the payload at well over 100 tons. I also added some probe cores, large solar panels, and docking ports on them to make the launch more than just a demonstration. I can now dock and use them to refuel before a long range transfer in the future. Getting into the details of the build a little more, you might have noticed I am using the engine plates as fairings to hide as many reaction wheels inside as I can to maximize as much control over these large 5 meter tanks as possible. In the past I have used fairings to do this, but the engine plates keep the rocket much more rigid and also a lower part count. I did have to support the rocket with some struts on the exterior, but very little was actually needed. The rocket is entirely reusable, which also brings me to what else makes this build special. The fairing itself is also reusable on this rocket. I will go into further detail on the fairings and how to build them in a minute and the good news about that is the update this week which is 1.1 adds open ended fairings. So that makes building this fairing much easier than what is showed in the video and I'll go over all that in a minute. A um, couple more notes about the rest of the build. You can see I had to use a little strutting to give the landing legs a bit more clearance for these larger engines and tanks. They seem to handle the weight completely fine on the landings. Uh, the rocket does have parachutes, so if you decide to download this and run out of fuel on the way back, uh, you do have some course of action there still. So other than that, I am just going through here and making sure all the staging is correct and that I actually have enough Delta V needed for each stage to land comfortably. And uh, once all that is situated, uh, we're going to jump up to the fairing build here. And at the fairing, you can see we are going to grab one of the small wing connectors, the Type E. Now I will just warn you before I go any further. 
Uh, like I was saying earlier, there is a very cool new update coming this week, which adds a lot of great updates and add-ons, uh, one of which is the ability to let you set your fairings as open-ended. Uh, in the past, this was only possible by closing the fairings in the way you see here, uh, with the wing connectors or some other structural item. Uh, you can see how tedious this is to line up the fairing and to close it uh, nicely. So if you're interested in building a rocket the style in the future, just know you can completely skip this uh, using connectors here. I don't think I'll make an updated video as this method still works and it's really just a small part of the entire build. Now this is the part to pay attention to here. We are going to grab the alligator G12 hinge and put it down on our fairing node which in this case is covered by a battery. Uh, then we are going to hold shift to drag that up to the top of our open ended fairing and rotate it in 90 degrees. Uh, we do that so that when it opens fully we have clearance for the cargo inside. Uh, once we get it situated to the right height so that the hinge is just at the top of the bottom fairing there uh, We want to go ahead and grab one of the smaller fairings here And then a nose cone as well and just put both of them onto the alligator hinge like shown here uh, You want to keep the nose cone as small as possible here because these robotic hinges that were added uh, They don't really have much useful torque um, And again this part can be ignored uh, as I'm just grabbing the same connector types again to not only close the top of the open-ended fairing but they're also kind of useful to line the top and bottoms up here. I uh, don't have much to talk about here as this entire process will be outdated in a few days so instead I will just talk about the new update where we will be getting comets into the game which is exciting but uh, for me the most exciting news about the one point uh, 1, 0, or 1.10 update is the visual overhaul to lathe. Uh, this is the perfect timing as I am finishing up my Duna series and the plans for the following series have been laid for quite a while now. Uh, so to me this was great news. I have wanted to do a lathe series for submarine and water based designs and lathe seems like the perfect place to set up a long term base as it's the only location other than Kerbin in the solar system that has a breathable atmosphere, but I will have more details of that in the next video. Alright, the uh, fairings closed up and now we're going to set our alligator hinge up to the cow controller here. I'm putting it on the EVA controls using the play position so that I can open and close the hinge to any angle I want. And there you go, you can see how our fairing will open and close and now just to set up the docking ports here uh, to their own action groups with the docking ports we can use uh, some of the struts here to help secure the top fairing. These will break when the docking ports are undocked. And uh, enough with the build. Uh, let's get it out finally to the launch pad and see how it flies and lands. For anyone who has watched one of my videos before, this is going to look pretty familiar. And I think this is going to be the last time I show this launch sequence. I have recorded a few times using mods and now this uh, fully stocked build is going to be my new heavy launcher going forward. So uh, just to save time and not bore people in the future, I will just direct to this video if people are interested in seeing how the payloads are launched and uh, the boosters are landed. And speaking of landing boosters, here are our first stage boosters making their way back to the KSC. Uh, you can notice they're pretty balanced and uh, they naturally just want to move retrograde on their own. You can use the air brakes to reduce as much speed as possible and save fuel for the landings. Uh, already onto the second stage, you can get a closer look here at how much control we have over these large tanks as this one flips around and uh, fires back to the launch pad. The air brake shaving off a bit of speed and then the engines just so that we can slow down here for uh, even more control. You can see uh, how the landing legs do a really good job at keeping the booster stable even if you don't come down at a perfect angle or speed. Uh, 
All right, three boosters picked up, and now on to the fun one. Our third stage is the one we land out at sea, and in the past I've used a modded aircraft carrier to land this on. Uh, but to go along with our stock build, you saw the barge that was launched at the intro to this, and that barge will now be our future landing spot. So, uh, we have our booster coming down, searching for the small target, and you can see it approaching the barge here just a bit off and trying to readjust. Uh, getting back on course and a little squirrely, but still managing to land it down safely. Um, I did forget to mention earlier uh, during the build that uh, this stage is fitted with a small claw below the engine. Uh, that's there so that it can be armed and the landing leg stashed away. The claw will then make contact with the barge and secures it in place for the drive back to the KSC. Uh, I had some fun driving this barge around with my booster safely on board and you can watch as it is drove back to the launch pad with all engines intact and free of salt water. And finally onto our payload, as we're coming up to circularize in our low carbon orbit. We still have plenty of Delta V left here to rendezvous if needed with uh, say a space station or mothership in a higher orbit. And then still return back down to the KSC safely. Um, we've gone ahead and undocked the tanks as the top of our fairing opens. Uh, you may have noticed we put some Werner RCS thrusters inside the fairing to help back the stage away slowly and deploy the cargo. Cargo clear, let's uh, close this lid and finally head home. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this build. I went through a lot of different variations and battled back and forth with uh, form and function to get something that was not only useful but also appealing and realistic to a design and launch we might see in a real world setting. Um, most of the style and setup outside of the fairing is already being done at SpaceX and they themselves have said they plan to make the fairings reusable at some point so you know with that in mind I feel very comfortable with how this rocket turned out and I, uh, I can't wait to see it in the next video to finish my Duna Colony series. If you happen to make it this far in yet another long video I just want to say I really appreciate it, uh, you watching, and uh, I just hope that you either enjoyed or at least got a few ideas to design your own reusable rocket, uh, if you're interested in that. Um, I will try to get the Duna series finale finished over the next few weeks, so make sure to check back for that, and until next time, like and subscribe, and uh, thanks again everyone.